What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, it's your homie, Futuristic Mike, and I'm back with another movie review if you're new. Now, this is going to be a movie review on Don't Breathe 2. If you're a fan of movie reviews, hit the like on this video. If you're new to my channel and this is the first time you're finding me, subscribe and turn on those post notifications so when I post movie reviews, you get them. Now, I've been waiting for this movie for the longest time, man. I seem Don't Breathe the first one when it first came out i remember i was working where i was working at the time and my manager told me like yo don't breathe is one of the dopest movies that i've ever seen you gotta check it out so i went home that night and i checked it out back in 2016 and i just loved it so much and you know i was wondering over the years if they were ever gonna make a sequel and then when i finally found out that they were making a sequel and it was in the works I was so excited. But this was a long time ago when I first found out that they were actually making another one and it took a while. So I didn't know if it was for sure coming. Like I didn't know if it was just rumors or if it was actually happening. And then we finally got Don't Breathe 2 and I went to the movies the other day to see it. And I think it was dope, man. I'm gonna rate this one a 7.5 out of 10. I rate the first one 8.5 out of 10. You know, obviously the first one is better, but this one was pretty good. The description reads, The sequel is set in the years following the initial deadly home invasion where Norman Nordstrom lives in quiet solace until his past sins catch up to him. There's only two people I really care to name, which is Stephen Lang, who plays Norman Nordstrom, and Madeline Grace, who plays Phoenix. Those are the two main characters in the movie, and Phoenix is Norman's daughter, or at least that's what we think when the movie starts. It turns out that that's actually not his daughter, and the people that break in came to get the girl. And then we find out later on that, you know, Norman stole this girl from a house fire years ago. So this dude named Raylan and his crew break in the blind man's house, and their main goal is to get the girl back. And it takes a long time for them to do that. You know, it's a game of cat and mouse. The girl's hiding, the blind man's uh, messing them up. He's hiding and it's just a whole bunch of back and forth. But that's their main goal is to get the girl back. But what they really want to do as well is to kill this blind man because Raylan is holding a grudge. You know, he's mad at the fact that Norman stole his supposed daughter years ago, like eight years ago. Man, let me tell you, when he finally takes the girl, he ends up taking her to this weird abandoned house or whatever it is, this little building. And the girl thinks her mom is dead. You know, she used to visit her mom in the old house that burnt down in the fire. And she used to bring her flowers and stuff like that. And then it turns out her mom is alive. At least I think this is her mom. I don't know. Maybe it's just some random psycho because it turns out she doesn't give a damn about her daughter. All she wants is the same blood type from somebody. You know, she needs somebody to have the same blood type as her so she can get a new heart. Because we see that she's spitting up blood and stuff like that. And I guess Raylan came to look for the girl just to save his girlfriend or his wife or whoever. And it was just crazy, man. It was like a sick thing. It was like real psycho that they actually were gonna try to kill a little girl just to take her heart out and put it in this woman. Before all the criminals leave the blind man's house, they burn his house down. And of course they think he's dead, but we know better than that. He ends up finding this building where they're at and he ends up saving the girl. And it's just a whole bunch of crazy stuff that goes down, man. He messes these people up. I'm telling you, he messes them up. There's one part where he throws a hammer at somebody. He takes a gun and he shoots the hell out of a couple of them. You can tell that this blind man has experience. You can tell that he was definitely in the military or something. Like he has some type of experience in his past life. This movie was just a whole lot different because the first movie, it was just these kids trying to break into his house and get his settlement, you know, because he had a whole bunch of money stashed up in the house and they find out that he has a girl in the basement. 
she was pregnant with his child and everything because he raped her. You know, he was just trying to get a child back because he lost his daughter years ago. And that's what the first one was about. And it's like in the first one, you're really not even rooting for the blind man. You're just like kind of rooting for these kids to get the money and get out of this house. But in the second one, you really want the blind man to just mess these dudes up because these dudes are so messed up in the head. At least for me, man, I was rooting for the blind man in the sequel. But the kills were so intense in this movie. That's one thing I like about this movie better than the first one. It's like you actually want to see him kill these people, and once he does, it's definitely satisfying because these bad guys are so annoying. In the first one, you don't want the blind man to kill these dudes. You know, these dudes are just kids. They want to get by, they want to get some money, and they just want a better life. That's pretty much what the first one is about, man. So you don't really want anything bad to happen to these kids in the first one. But in this one... You want everything bad to happen to these criminals that broke in this blind man's house. But Phoenix, the little girl, was starting to believe everything they were saying. You know, her supposed dad and mom. But once she finds out what they're trying to do to her, man, they drug her and everything. She tells them that he'll find them and kill them. And that's exactly what he does. But... The blind man actually gets stabbed at the end of this movie and you don't really know if he's dead or not. We can assume that he's dead. You know, the little girl left. She tried to save him, but it was too late. And she ended up going to like a little shelter or a home where there's other little girls and stuff. That's where she's gonna live. But you don't know if the blind man's actually dead or alive. It looked like he died, but we just don't know. And I don't know if there's going to be a third one in the future or not. There possibly could be. You know, they could bring it back and say that the blind man survived. You know, he's in the hospital and stuff like that. Because in the first one, I don't even know how the blind man survived after getting thrown down them steps and everything that they did to him in the first one. So we don't know at the end of the second one if he's alive or dead. I'm hoping he's alive so we can at least get one more of these movies because these movies are good. But there's nothing like the first one. I did like this one. It was a good watch. But if you guys seen it, comment your thoughts down below. Let me know what you thought of Don't Breathe 2, the sequel. Do you think there's going to be a third one? Just let me know your thoughts down below. Keep supporting your boy, and I'll be continuing to bring y'all movie reviews in the future. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And smash that notification bell so you can never miss a video. If you guys want to donate to the channel, I got links below to the PayPal and Cash App accounts. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me get out of here, y'all. It's your boy, Futuristic Mike, and I'll talk to you on the next one. I'm out. Peace.